Anyway, I think the video from last year when I did last Thursday's lecture was better than last Thursday's lecture. So if you uh, if you didn't get to be here live last last Thursday and uh, you were trying to watch online, I know at least one person was trying to watch online. We forgot to click the go live button, so you didn't get to watch online. But the video from when I last did it was better than last week's lecture anyway. So watch that one instead. It's the same content. Um, I think I was more on my game a year ago when I did this. Um, so again, when you're talking, try to talk into one of the microphones. Um, and I might want to review the videos while I'm reviewing my grading. So make sure that I can hear you when you're talking. Um, two microphones. The controls on the uh, the laptop. I moved the keyboard and mouse for the other computer away so you won't try to use it for control. Um, who's who's first? Group 11. You guys ready? Um, so go to uh, in the in the speed grader window here just find uh, find the person who submitted your uh, presentation to click on it. it should open right up to you. They're not by group number. And I'm going to go sit down. I'm going to go around the other side and sit down. Uh, yeah. I need baby Mike. Oh, I think. Is it that one? It's one. that one. That one's the receiver. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. I'm messing with things. Yeah, that'll be more clear now. Well, I have no idea if this thing's on, but um, I hope it is. Um, so hello again. We are a NT, Ant, and we are creating a lock guide, and here is our investment pitch deck. In case you forgot, here are our iterations of our lock guide. Um, this is iteration one. Fire, if you want to just explain them quickly. Yep, basically... It's something that helps you line your key up with your lock. It's like four, it's like three pieces of plastic. And we've got a couple different designs. And the customers can pick which one they'd like. Um, so our initial needs, we're going to need an injection molding with three machine and three custom molds, um, magnets for iteration 1A, and kilos of PLA. Um, our location will be in Nanchez, Mississippi. There's a couple pictures. They're a little small, but it's a warehouse. Wow. Um, and it has about like 4,200 square feet or something like that. Um, real quick, our numbers. So we're guessing the molds are probably going to cost uh, about $20,000 for a run of 30,000 pieces. Um, our materials, uh, it's like 10 cents for the magnets and then uh, two bucks 50 for the plastic that we're using. Um, the machine itself is going to be around $50,000. We got uh, a decent price on our location. So our warehouse is only going to be $300,000, which would be a total starting investment of $446,000 for our first part. Um, uh, we're going to sell them for 20 bucks a pop plus shipping and handling. And each model costs us about $4 to make. So, we're predicting that if we sell 22,000 units, we'll break even. And then if we finish our run of 30,000, we'll have a profit above about $150,000. Um, just as a quick note, um, the amount of molds we are buying is and material is enough to create 30,000 units um, so that we can break even. Once we break even and make that profit of 153000 it can cycle back and go back into buying the molds again and then starting the process all over. It's like a beautiful cycle of investment. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Any Thank questions? You. Questions? In the back? Um, does your cost include a labor cost? Are we are labor. And the profits will go back into ourselves. So are you paying yourself something out of this? Or? Yeah, out of the profits. Yeah. Okay. Anybody, Anybody else? else? 
Going once. Going twice. Thanks for going backwards to group 10 then, right? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I guess just uh, are we on? They're on. All right. Hello, everyone. We are the Roly Polies, also known as Group 10. As a reminder, this is the product we're making, um, Roly STEM toys out of aluminum. Yeah, so starting with a, a discussion about the machine and tool prices for how we're going to manufacture it. Um, we're going to be buying a Haas VF3 CNC mill, which is going to have a fourth axis module. So the fourth axis is basically it makes it into a three plus one. So you can spin the, the stem toy as we're as we're milling it. Um, this is going to it's going to cost us about forty thousand dollars plus three thousand dollars to ship it as we're buying used machines, as that's going to be a cheaper option um, for the manufacturing. We're going to buy two um, and then it comes with the fourth axis rotary table. So we don't have to buy that separately. We're then going to be buying a quarter inch flat end mill and a quarter inch ball end mill. That is the two tools that we're going to need for the manufacturing of the part. So it's $70 for the end mill, $120 for the ball end mill. And we're going to be buying multiple of these, obviously, per part. But that's going to be the starting for that first part. The material we'll be using is this aluminum. Um, we'll be buying it in a three by three square stock um, to make the size of the toy that we want. Um, and to buy like 100 units of a 12 foot length is going to be about $90,000. So that will get us to be uh, about $37 to make one unit. Um, and then adding on sort of all the manufacturing costs, including labor and just the machines that go into it, that will be about $45 uh, per unit. So when you take all this into account and you crunch the numbers and you get into your final calculations, um, for making the first part, um, so you have the manufacturing location, which we are going to buy this location. Um, it's in Waco, Texas. Uh, it's a big warehouse. We're going to be buying it out. We think we're confident in our in our part, and we think that it's going to sell. So it's going to be seven hundred thousand dollars to buy the part. You then have the equipment, which is ninety thousand dollars, because forty thousand for the machine, and then you have the tooling, another two thousand plus all the materials and storage and utilities, and you end up with about nine hundred thousand dollars as that initial investment, um, which breaks it down to being about forty five ninety seven. Um, for the materials and manufacturing labor for us to make each coherent part, which means the final cost would be $85, which is competitive considering that for high-end um, metal stem toys and desk toys, the average price is anywhere from 40 to 110 really depending on size. But ours will be pretty large. Oh, sorry. In terms of making that money back, uh, we kind of devised this five-year plan. So... 30% of the profits would be given to you, our investor, um, as we're creating these parts in these five years. And so it should take about 57,000 parts in that five years, which we're confident in the two machines that we're purchasing. We'll be able to make that many. Uh, that's about 1,000 parts a month. Um, and then we'll break even. Again, you're, you'll be getting money that whole time. We'll be paying for the labor costs as well that whole time. Um, and the reason that we think that this is a valuable thing to even invest in. We're making a product in the USA. Um, that's a huge selling point. These parts are much bigger than our competitors, so it's unique in that facet. Um, and it's made out of aluminum, which is not a metal that we saw in the competitors' um, parts. Um, so that that makes it unique as well. Um, and again, we're thinking that if this sells well, we'll be able to machine different sized parts um, as we'll have multiple machines to do that on. Thank you. Um, so we really want to give 30% back. So like we would make some sort of change, like whether we would switch to only making the lower sizes of the parts and we, you know, order to bring the price down or some sort of change on our end that would make it so they could still have their 30%. The warehouse is, I think it's 
six thousand square feet. Six thousand square feet. Yeah. Three building. Team nine, group nine. Uh, hi, we are Group 9, and for those who don't remember, our pitch was the hearing aids, like the custom hearing aids. <clears throat> um, now, <clears throat> when calculating our costs, we knew that we needed, for fix, we needed an injection molding, pre-assembled electronics, molding kits, and scanners, as well as silicone to actually make the pieces. And we finally found a lease, um, at least the place in Texas. Um, and all that added up in the first year was just under $26,000. And, you know, without the scanners, since that would be a one-time purchase, it was also just under $20,000. Um, variable, now for shipping and everything, as well as the sound tubes, which are really important um, for the actual pieces. Um, the putty, same as the sound tubes. And the salary, which we calculated, calculated for $25,000, Twenty-five dollars an hour at eight dollars an hour, eight hours per day for our whole group um, would be just under four hundred forty thousand dollars. All the variable costs added up would be around four hundred forty-five thousand dollars, and that's per year. Um, now, total costs, fixed plus variable, uh, would be four hundred sixty-four thousand dollars, just about. And we calculated that a single parts cost would be. Just under hundred dollars at ninety five dollars and thirty six cents. Um, now we also added some internal sources of finance, which would be personal savings and family members who were willing to donate money. And external would be sponsorships, donations, debentures, venture capitalists, pretty much anyone willing to invest in our company and liking what we were doing. Um, selling price and break even point. Now, the price for the adult would be $1,800, and the price for the child one would be $1,500. Um, and as you can see, the adult one is under average, and the child one is in the lower range of that average. Um, the child one is it's a very big range, and that's just simply due to quality reasons. Um, our break even point would be fixed over selling price per unit minus variable cost. So, fixed. Just under twenty thousand dollars selling price per unit, sixteen fifty variable cost, about nine hundred twenty-seven dollars per unit, and we calculated that to break even, we would need to sell twenty-seven units, which is not bad at all. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is our break-even chart for adult and ch um, child hearing aids, since they are at different price ranges. Um, so fixed costs, obviously, that's not changing. Um, total cost and total revenue. As you can see, that total revenue has a much um, steeper slope. And child and hearing aids would have the same break even point. Now, payback period uh, projected revenue per year for adult hearing aids, 480 times 1800, um, is $864,000, approach, you know, approaching a million dollars. Um, since we don't know donations, sponsorships, investments we really we really can't tell exactly how much but we do know that it would absolutely approach a million dollars um in the payback period which is initial investment over cash inflow multiplied by 12 um which would be um six point four six and a half months um this is the payback period and the 
projected revenue per year for the child would be $720,000. Now, you pretty much can add those up because they're kind of separate. Um, and, you know, as you can see, that is also, once again, approaching $2 million. Um, now, the payback period for the child is also six and a half months. Um, and, you know, together with adult and child hearing aids, that payback period, six and a half months. Uh, that's it. Uh, good morning, everyone. We're group eight. We'll be looking to make a uh, milled and uh, turned cannon. Just to recap who we are, we're going to mill the base and turn the barrel of a small adult novelty cannon, which also happens to function. Um, we'll be operating from Houston, Texas, and uh, it'll be, yeah, it'll be functional, tough, and safe. So to cover uh, the finances, um, we'll be looking to pay a salary per month of $7,250 for the workers, as well as we'll be looking at a uh, rent of $7,830. We'll be starting with two mills and one lathe, the two mills costing $75,000 and the lathe costing $54,000, as well as a bandsaw of $370. And we'll be looking at utility costs of $145 per month. So in total, what this means is that our total startup cost for the first month is $145,580. Uh, to elaborate on the parts themselves, the stock is $44.31. To break it down, the barrel is $17 and the base is $27. Uh, the screws will be $0.68, cents, boxes $0.45. Cents, as well as the tooling as eight cents. So every part will cost $45.52. And um, per Canon, we plan to price at $74.76 as a reference to our Independence Day. Um, we'll be looking to produce and sell 1,920 Canons every month. And what this means is after about 3.2 months, we'll be able to make a profit. So our fixed cost is $130,000 with variable costs of $45.52, um, as well as monthly costs of $15,225. So regarding the profits, every part sold will net us $29.24. And uh, if we meet the 1,920 can monthly cannons sold, we'll be uh, making a profit of $40,000 920, uh, $40,920. So looking at the process, we have a, a breakdown right here. We have four main operations. So our stock is going to come in bars, right? We're going to have those cylinders that you put into the lathe, but the ones that go in the mill, those bars are going to have to be cut beforehand. So we, we're going to have a bandsaw the operator is going to cut the stock there. And then that process, we say it'll take about one minute per part. But there's a lot extra to, you know, grab the bar, put it in the machine. The actual act of cutting it is very quick, but we, we gave it a whole minute per to account for that. Milling the base is the next part, and this is going to take 10 minutes. So if you look at the picture in the cannon here, our cannon is going to be just like that. Instead of those two screws in the bottom, that base is going to be one solid milled part. 
very similar to how we made the base for our Sterling engines. So that's going to take 10 minutes. We're going to have two mills running in parallel so that we output one every five minutes. Then we have the lathe at the same time is turning that barrel. And these barrels are going to take about five minutes. And for inspecting and packing the parts, we're going to give that another five minutes per part because they have to put the screws in the box, uh, put the thing in the box, labels, all of that. So our first station, cutting the stock, milling, and turning, that's all going to take five minutes per part. And then the inspection packs another five minutes. So that's how we were able to balance the assembly line to meet our tax time. So the layout, I whipped this up in Excel, and I, I tried my best to mirror what the uh, washburn machine shops look like. So we have space in the middle for people to walk, move materials, stuff like that. And these bubbles here show uh, in color spectrum order the path that the raw material takes through the facility as it becomes the cannon. We start at receiving. It's the bars are stored near the band saws where they get cut in smaller parts and they get fed to the mills. Uh, the rods are stored next to the lathes where they're gonna be inserted into the lathes and then cut from there. They're gonna go to the work and process storage area where the inspector packing people can uh, pack those parts and send it to shipping. And so we're gonna start out with two mills and one lathe but our facility, our thousand foot facility is large enough to add, uh, to double our production if we need it. All we'd have to do is buy more machines and hire some more workers to run those machines. All right, any questions? I think I'm, um, so you said that your, um, your expansion is your so currently is it just a Yep. Um, yeah, we we'd probably put them in the middle or something, you know, leave the space for the, the others. You can lease it out the leaves. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, we are leasing this. That's why we do the calculations by month. That's why we have such a much lower startup cost of the lease. Yeah, because because a lot of these facilities, they just have a wall that's just a bunch of shipping doors. So there might be a door here, 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 and here. Um, but if, if the facility was more square, we could have gone for a U shape. But but the the layout, I just I, I wanted it to fit good on the screen. So the ten by fifty <laughs> is what we went for, uh, twenty by fifty to make a thousand square feet. So the the U shape is more like a bracket, like a staple. This is actually a common shape for building an industrial park. Yeah. So yeah, that actually works. Good explanation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Um, group, group, group eight, group seven. <laughs> and group, group eight, you guys should thank the groups that went before you for going a little bit fast. You went a little bit long, and we're right on time right now. That's cool. And then you can find find the name of whoever she did it. Oh, I'm recipiela, so I'm pretty sure. It's like speed speedgrader. It's the updated one. I got it. For legal reasons, that's not true. Is it? I like just submitted one that was like updated. Hold on. Where is my name? Uh, no presentation. Yeah, just do this. Um, actually, no. No. Oh, here it is. I got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. You may just have to scroll. 
Easier? Yeah, just scroll. <clears throat> All right, so we were the sustainable Sudoku Rubik's Cube. Um, and as a reminder, uh, this is what we did. And we decided to work in Worcester and take PLA, recycled PLA from other universities um, that weren't using it anymore. So. OK, so we decided to go with injection molding uh, for a few reasons. One, it's pretty easy to injection mold PLA. Uh, two, it's cost effective once we get over the initial tooling and mold costs, uh, it, it, it's fixed. Uh, we no longer have repeating costs like for, for the stock. We just have to take this recycled PLA. Uh, so our estimated mold costs are $80,000. That's just because we have a lot of different small complex parts. Uh, so we have to do a lot of smaller molds instead of one or two larger molds. And then our actual molding machine, we found a machine that, that fits all of our criteria for about $100,000. Uh, yeah. Um, and since our location is in Worcester, we would be following Massachusetts minimum wage guidelines. So that would be approximately $15 an hour. Um, with the goal of making or assembling about 15 parts per hour, that would be a dollar per part. Um, and our first um, production batch would be 100,000 parts. So that's where we get $100,000 per year. So our sale projected price is Sense, uh, just based off of other similar people that are on the market, also in the US, uh, online, on the market. So our first production batch, we decided $100,000 uh, $100, parts. Uh, this is simply based on the fact that uh, injection mold, uh, for injection molding, uh, is projected to make about $100,000 100, parts, excuse me, um, before it is no longer usable. So just uh, so we can minimize the costs. And then what are our costs of it sold? So we said that there would be a maximum of 24 cents per part. This is because we're planning on using recycled PLA, but that's not always the case. So we decided to price it um, as if we were buying PLA. Uh, so we decided to base that number off of a dollar per kilogram and then taking the volume of the part being uh, 1.75, 175.6 uh, centimeters, then we can price it at 24 cents. All right, and so for the first batch, we decided to take into account the material, labor, and location costs. And based on all the calculations that we were able to do, we figured out that we would have approximately 38,048 parts in order to break even. And that's, that, that's annoying. All right. <laughs> and so based on that, we have about $45,000 in profit after the first batch. And with any future batches, it would cost about $300 thousand dollars in order to that one. yeah so we require about three hundred four thousand dollars to cover any costs related to actually the man to the manufacturing process and so that would bring us to it's about <laughs> yeah it's about three hundred thousand dollars that we'd need in order to cover the sunk costs that we do have and then for pro and profit on any future batch where we don't have to pay for new new machinery or location would bring us to about six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for every hundred thousand parts yeah Any questions? So, yeah. does your price per unit only include the material or does it also include like how much you're paying for the injection it, it all it includes it includes everything Yes, we we found there. I mean, was the only location for it was roughly five hundred thousand dollars for for relatively seventy six hundred square feet. Yeah, yeah. So surprisingly. Any other questions? Group six.
Um, hello, so we're group six. Um, and yeah, this is our presentation. So basically we're, we're Project Projectile. Um, that's the name of our company. What we're making is a marble launcher, um, more similar to the um, $85 priced one. Um, basically for educational purposes, we're gonna be selling to schools and stuff. Um, so yeah. So the cost of the first part um, for our property, we are definitely going with the abandoned Denny's in Big Spring, Texas. Um, it's off the market right now, and that's because we bought it. <laughs> um, so for the oh, sorry, so for the machines, we need one mini mill, um, and that's for slotting and um, just for basic purposes of uh, making the, the 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 tube that we're going to be launching the uh, marbles out of. Um, and there's obviously the more we make profit, the more we can buy of the more uh, of these machines to. Um, have better efficiency in our manufacturing process and then a laser cutter to cut the wood um, that we're using as the kind of like back plate of the marble launcher and for labor um, we decided we'd have six employees two per each shift running three shifts a day um, like seven hour shifts um, the reason we have six employees is because our group is six people and that would be just us working um, so basically in the end, we came up with that, uh, it would cost us about $279,000 to start. And this is including a year of salary for the, um, sorry. Yeah. A year of salary for the, the laborers and the machines and all the material that we need for the year. basically. So our cost per part would be around $2.95 per launcher. We expected that for our frame of the board, it'd be about $0.47 cents for the tempered panel, and then $2 for the acrylic tube when it was manufactured down, $0.03 cents for the per part for per rubber foot, about $0.28 cents a spring, and per marble, it's about $0.03, cents, and I think we said like three marbles in a box. Yeah, so we're just going to throw three marbles in there in case they lose them or, you know, Somebody gets injured with one. Yeah. <laughs> so if everything goes exactly to plan, which it won't, but will, we'll sell launchers for about thirty dollars each, which is on the lower end versus the prices uh, yes. we did originally look at. The ones we originally looked at could range to eighty, a high of eighty dollars, but low kits cost around like twenty eight. So we thought we'd go in the middle and go to thirty. We'd run the shop 21 hours per day for the three shifts. And we, when we averaged out the number, we did get about four launchers per hour per shift. So we would get 96 launchers per day. And if they all sold at $30, which is com a comparable rate, we'd make it back in just over 100 days. Yeah, so we wanted to price it $30 because it's the cheaper side and it's, it's it's going to be a uh, similar build quality to the $85 one, but we're selling it cheaper so that we can sell more. Um, and there would just be more customers, I guess. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? So you bought that Denny's for $16,000. Um, we got a really yeah. good deal. It was abandoned and haunted. Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, probably. I gotta take the real estate when it's there. Yeah. Uh, any questions? All right. Group five. <laughs> um, so I'm Amrit. I'm Echo. And our product that we're uh, making is going to be called Wire Go Bendy. And just a little bit of background if you guys forgot what our project was. Um, basically, we're going to be making a stem toy that, are, that consists of two interlocking rings. And the challenge would be um, to get them unstuck and then put them back together, which seems easy, but is really actually very difficult. 
Um, so for our company specifically, we're going to be selling a pack of two different puzzles, but we're going to be creating four different, uh, four different variations of it. And uh, what we would be using would be consisting a, of a CNC 3D wire bender. Um, originally, we wanted to do a batch production to reduce change over time. Um, but with this machine, it's not as likely. So instead, what we were thinking of doing is having it be, we would insert a certain amount of stock of the wire, and you would keep going until the wire runs out of, of that specific product. That way, there's a reduced of change over time. So the process of designing would be draft the designs, um, create the CAD or CAM software, insert the wire into the machine, and run the software monitoring for errors. If there are any errors, the design would be improved. And once that's done, quality would be checked, and then it would be packaged for shipping. Um, so just a little bit about, about our location. It is in South Carolina, and we found this industrial warehouse for about 2,500 square feet. And it consists of four exterior dock doors, two of which we would be using for receiving and shipment. Um, I don't have the layout ready like Ben did, but it would be very similar to that in the sense that we would get receiving on one end, shipping at the other. In between those, we would have our two machines, because right now we're only, uh, we only have two machines, but we, um, our goal is to expand to get uh, four sorry, five machines so that we're able to create a different variations for each machine. Because um, currently what we're doing right now is we have two machines and two of the machines are running two different programs. And that would increase our change over time when we are trying to put the different variations, which is something that we want to reduce in the future. Um, and it costs about $35,600 uh, $35, um, to cost per, to lease it per year, with a property tax of about 7.75% So for the materials, for two machines, it's $5,000 each, so $100,000. And the warehouse is about $36,000 per year. So basically, um, we, when we were looking online for how much these wire vendor machines cost, we found the average about, was about 50K. We kind of just rolled with it, because that isn't as bad as it seems. Um, when it came down to packaging, we were planning on putting each of the two packs into a toy packaging. Also, recently we found another called poster pack. I did not know that. Um, personally, I like the pack of the Hot Wheels. I used to have a bunch of Hot Wheels as a kid, so I was like, might as well implement that now. Because every kid loves opening these packages, even though they're really difficult. And you probably need parental supervision trying to open them because you're using scissors to cut them and all that. So. Um, so something like that is kind of what we were thinking for our packaging, and then those two packs of the interlocking rings would be put into a mailing or a manila envelope, um, which is the, for the cost for that, it's very, very minimal. I think on Amazon, for uh, Amazon business, you can get it for 200 for like 15 bucks. That is very minimal to us as a company. And for the raw material, um, we have all the specifications up there about what type of stainless steel wire we're going to be using, and we're going to get 50 units of that averaging to be about $5,000. Um, just so, so for the operation standpoint, when we get to this, so we're going to be having first and second shift when we run this. We're not having any weekend shifts um, currently because it's unneeded, but we're planning since we have two machines, we'll have four operators in the first shift, paying them $15.50, and three operators in the second shift for $17.50. The reasoning behind those numbers we have two machines, and then the first shift is going to be a little bit busier um, for that. It's going to be a bit busier and a bit more half with the stuff that we have to do. So there we have backups for each operator for that. And then if anyone needs to take a break, they're able to do so. For three operators, it's kind of the same mindset, but we're not having as much of, an, um, of a supply demand during second shift. So we can ease it up a little bit. Um, we have our human resources and accounting. And, and our tech managers or engineers and they both are working on a salary basis, unlike our operators. So those are just some numbers up there. And we also have included our utilities. Um, and it's about $2.10 square feet annually. So you can do math for that. So we said our facility was about 3,000 square feet. Um, but yeah, so it would be about, about, it would be about $5,000 per year for the utilities. And then just some numbers for the machine power costs. Uh, for the machine power that we're going to be using, um, 
coach update. But that's what we have for our operations. So we plan on selling um, two brain teaser puzzles together for $7 and making a little over 10,000 brain teasers a week. Um, we have estimated about $18,000 made per week. And the first part cost is $1.45 and the per unit cost, which would be two puzzles, is a little bit over 99 cents. Um, so we have some specifications underneath this, but the reasoning because the reasoning why we started we we're interested in this product is because it's making a comeback. Um, as you know, at like older things, I guess, usually do make comebacks in the future, such as the flare pants that are coming back now. We can say that this <laughs> this little toy is trending on TikTok. Kids are always on TikTok, it's spreading. TikTok is now on um, Instagram, so that would also help with our marketing. Um, as well as everyone, all little kids are interested in trying and what better way to spend money than using to enhance your brain. And <clears throat> that leads us to our investment. We're looking for 150k for 5% stake just so that we can expand our warehouse and get those machines. And that's it. Any Great. questions? Yeah, I don't think we have time for questions. We need to okay. move on. Group four. <laughs> What kind of awful sound just happens when you drop that? Hello, we are group four. All right, just to recap, we're making fidget cubes with modular gear features. And we're also going to be based out of Colorado. We have a short term lease for a relatively small industrial space. And we're machining everything out of 6061 aluminum stock. Uh, more on that later. So our startup costs are leasing and renting. This industrial garage space is going to be about $21,600 a year. And then the CNC machines that we want to get, we're going to get two for about 40000 each. And also a forklift to move our stock and our inventory. So our startup cost, therefore, will be about $126,600. All right. So we're going to be making our parts out of three and a quarter inch 66B1 aluminum square bar. And we're going to be machining the gears out of quarter inch uh, plate stock. Uh, we're sourcing everything from Midwest, Midwest steel and aluminum. Um, should be quick shipping and cheap to Colorado. Uh, we're getting the pricing for the stock based on getting 100 12 foot bars and 100 uh, 12 by 6 foot plates uh, for the bulk pricing. And we're calculating our operating costs for CNC machines, including labor power tooling at $88 an hour. Uh, so it brings it up to 640K per year. We're going to outsource the anodizing. We found a supplier for $2 a part. We we'll packaging in simple, I think four or five inch uh, cardboard boxes, which are gonna be 53 cents. Uh, and then all the stock material comes out to 470K about. Uh, and this is per year to make a run at 50,000 units. Uh, and that comes down to $30.29 per unit. Oh, and also the magnetic fasteners we found in Alibaba for one cent, uh, six per cube. So for our pricing of our product, we're going to try and price it for around $55. It's an elevated version of similar products that are like on Amazon for about 14 or something. Um, and so our year's production goal is going to be 40,000 cubes. Um, <laughs> and at 55 per cube, <clears throat> uh, we will be making $861,000 approximately in profit. In, year. in a year, yeah. Uh, how am I 
pulling this up? Sweet. Okay, good morning, everybody. We're Cubes. Um, so at Cubes, we're excited to bring a uh, educational uh, STEM toy to a wide demographic, but specifically to kids. Um, so we plan to do this by making uh, three by three inch uh, toy blocks um, with the periodic table on them, um, one uh, unit per face. Um, yeah. So we are in Cobb County, Georgia. Um, more specifically, we're in Marietta, Georgia. Um, this is just north of Atlanta. Um, we're in Georgia. Again, it's a, a bit of a manufacturing stronghold in the United States. Um, they're a right to work state. Um, they also have a, a large timber industry, which is great. Um, we plan to source our materials uh, locally um, and make these blocks out of wood. So this is a particularly good location. We're excited about this. <clears throat> so the building that we found um, again, is in Marietta, Georgia. It's huge. Um, so it's 14,000 square feet for $1.5 million. Um, that comes out to a cost of $105 per square foot, which is pretty fantastic. Um, we do not plan to use all of that, especially off the bat. Um, so if we can find another company to uh, sublease to, that'd be fantastic. Um, and that's also a very flexible space. Um, you'll see in the next couple of slides that our um, tooling production costs are very low um, because we're working with wood specifically and pretty pretty uh, like 2D um, and standard shapes. Um, so if we can afford more production lines, that'd be great. It doesn't take that much space. It's not that much overhead. Um, so that's a very flexible space, but also at a good price. We're excited about that. Um, in addition, it's set up. I mean, some of it is very large and open like this, um, but it's also set up with loading docks and the like um, and a good storefront as well. So uh, we think that this could be pretty useful. Um, for manufacturing, we'll be starting off with uh, four by four inch. Um, it's pretty standard timber, four by four, um, which is actually three and a half by three and a half inches, um, which is important. We'll be making our blocks three by three inches. You can buy this in a lot of lengths, eight foot, 10 foot, 16 foot or, or greater. Um, so we'll be chopping these off the bat with just a chop saw um, into four by four by four inch blocks. Um, so now we'll have ourselves some cubes. Um, we will stick these into a CNC machine and mill off a quarter inch on each side so that we'll have a nice consistent face. This will bring us down to our three by three by three inch. Um, using that same CNC, we'll be able to engrave in um, the into each face, um, each one of our elements, as well as if need be a custom one, perhaps for an upmarketed um, price. Um, once they come out the CNC machine, we'll be able to just use a belt sander and round out the edges to, just to make sure that everything comes out nice. There's no burrs and the like. Um, and then we'll paint the blocks. So that's our full setup. You'll notice it's really only um, a couple of, of units here. So we have ourselves a CNC router. Um, that does not have to be as complicated as the mini mills that we use in lab. This is all basically 2D machining. Um, so some very basic contouring and the like. Um, but a CNC router, a belt sander, a chop saw, a paint gun, um, and that's our line. So if we could afford a couple of these lines, we certainly have the space for it. Um, and we'd like to, but that really depends on initial working capital and the like. Um, that comes out to a total of about $30,000 in tooling. So as you can see, our space is much greater than our tooling costs. Um, as a result, our cost analysis looks like uh, other similar companies um, will sell for about $40 a piece. We might like to sell for around $40, $45 a piece as well. Um, we'd like to get our 4 by 4 for about 2 to $3 a feet. Um, each foot makes about three blocks, right? Uh, four inches, um, 20 blocks per set. We'd like to make 20, 20 blocks per set. Each block has six sides, right? There's 118 elements in the periodic table. Um, so we're expecting uh, about $20 um, per set uh, of cost to produce. Um, that gives us about a $20, $25 profit margin, which is about $100 per, or 100% profit margin. It's pretty great. Um, that means that we need to sell 1,500 units to make back the tooling cost per production line. Um, on top of that, our $1.5 million building, we're expecting about a $5,000 monthly payment on that. That's an additional 250. So we need to sell 250 of these to keep the roof over our head. But then on top of that, once we break the 1,500, uh, the 1500 unit mark, we'll be making up for each production line. Uh, and this is a concept of what it looks like. Questions? 
traditional like process when we're like creating a block or anything, we have a lot of excess material. What can you plan to do with that? Um, do you have a specific excess material you're you're thinking of? Yes. Um, so for Ford, you see from Mildred, um, like that initial cutting it down. You said there was going to be like a little bit of excess yeah. fire loader. Yeah, we're looking at the four by fours are three and a half inches by three and a half inches, and then we get our lengths. Now, if we get a funky length size, we'll be cutting it by four inches, but we expect it to be on a round number of feet. Um, so we expect that that should come out pretty much even to get four by four by four, and then we'll be milling off a quarter inch on the top and the bottom and the sides. We'll use the wood chips to make wood pellets. Absolutely. All right, group one and two. You have a choice. You could make like a YouTube video of your presentation and send it to me, where you could go at the beginning of class one. You can pick. So groups one and two, the beginning of class tomorrow, um, or if you choose not to go at the beginning of class tomorrow, you could make a video of your presentation and send it to me, okay? That way we don't uh, hold up the classroom. Tomorrow we'll go over, besides groups one and two, we'll go over any questions on the final exam. Yeah, that's fine. 